This is Alan Cooch from Let's Talk Business. One thing we try not to do is to talk down the economy on this programme, but the media in general does like to dwell and often overanalyse things. Both can actually make a situation appear worse than it is, especially for business owners and entrepreneurs. Russell Bowyer has run, bought and sold several companies over the past 25 years, so has been through at least three recessions. Russell also owns Bow Raven, a consultancy helping businesses grow in good and bad times. He joins me in the studio now. Are we the media, and I say we, responsible for talking the economy down and making it harder for small businesses? Yes, I think they are. And I've always said that what comes first, is it recession or people actually talking about recession coming? So the media will put out there all this bad news and everything like that, because only report it if it actually is significant. And then, of course, when people start reading about recessions or bad times, they might start holding back on buying things. And then all of a sudden, you're getting into recession because they talked about it. So, yes, I think the media have a big part to play in that, definitely. So we should be talking it up. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, let's talk. Or, or not reading the, the press in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good point. We first met, I think it was uh, 2008 or something around about that. Something around, something around, that, around yes, that. Yes. And then we were heading into what was probably the worst recession that has been around for at least 100 years. Yes. Now, you were running a business at that point. What did you find about that recession? That- well, interestingly, actually, that business. I didn't start up, although I have started up lots of businesses, that one I bought. Right. And I bought at a time when everything was supposedly going badly wrong. A good time to buy? Yes, it was a good time to buy because it was a buyer's market, certainly. And as long as you bought carefully and did your due diligence, then there's no reason not to. Of course, it's much more difficult to borrow money now than it was then. And I did borrow to buy the business, but interest rates were low. So that was a positive. And if you didn't inverted commas, believe everything that the press was saying. But of course, it was a bad time. And you believed in what you were doing and where you could take the business. Then that was what counted as far as I was concerned. In the stock market, they use a term, don't catch a falling knife. When you were looking for the business to buy, what sort of checks did you do then? Now, interestingly, I had a list of, I call them characteristics, if you like, of the businesses I was looking to buy. And one of them excluded a luxury good. Well, as you know, it was a fitted <laughs> furniture business, uh, or still is. But because the business had been around for about 30 or so years, and also it had been making profits, and it ticked a lot of the other boxes that I, I wanted it to, that's what I decided to buy. And then when I did my due diligence, making sure that you know, all the numbers stacked up, that's what I did. You had an advantage because you are by trade an accountant. For yes. those that aren't an accountant, what would be the key things to look out for? Well, of course, you can ask an accountant to help you with that. There's nothing to stop you doing that. But if you are someone that's starting out and you can't afford to perhaps get someone to look at it for you, you want to make sure that you start with sets of accounts. So you'll be looking back at least over the last three years. Does it make a profit or not? It's not to say that you can't buy a business that's making losses if you feel that you can turn that business and make it make a profit. But you need to make sure you know what you're doing. You need to look at their staffing. You need to check that they're paying their taxes and all these type of things, which is quite easy to do. You can go in there and you can check it back to the bank statements. Check their debtor balances. Or have they got any long outstanding amounts owed by their customers? Because that could signify something that's happening within the business. Have they got cash in the bank? There's a whole array of things that you can actually look into. Are there any nuggets that you would think, oh, now that is a very interesting business? And you'd immediately get your checkbook out and think, right, I'm going to buy that one. <laughs> and that's, that's the one for me. That's a very difficult question to answer, actually. I'm going to answer it in a slightly different way. One of the key things, as far as I'm concerned when you're buying a business, is to make sure the business you're buying is about the business more so than it's about the owner. Because when you buy it, the owner won't be there for very long. My, the, the owner I bought this from was around for a couple of weeks, and then he was gone. The actual goodwill was in the business name and what the business did rather than the owner. Because what you've got to be careful of is you buy a business that the business owner goes and then all the customers go with that person if that makes sense so that's one of the key things about buying a business i would always recommend now you're helping businesses at the moment aren't you yes how are you helping and what are you finding well when i had my own accounting practice which i sold back in 2003 actually i 
developed a couple of pieces of software. One of them is a piece of software which is called Increased Profit Software, which targets what I call the seven ways to grow a business. And I've also got another useful piece of software, which is called Cash Forecaster, which is actually to prepare cash and profit forecasts. Both of them I sell on the internet, uh, on my website. There's an interesting story behind the increased profit software, if I may. When I first developed that software, I was working with a company up in London, quite a big company. They're making quite big profits. And I sat down with him and he said, oh, I can't get any more profits out of this business. And I sat down with him after three hours of just going through his numbers and him being very patient with me saying, no, there's definitely something in here. But we actually targeted his average transaction value. And it was only tweaking it by a small amount. And what the software does, it shows you by tweaking things by a little amount what it will actually show, how it will affect the increase in your profits. And then you can go about saying, well, okay, if I could increase my profits, how would I do that? And all of a sudden, a light bulb went off. And he said, I know what I can do. And actually, as a result of that three hours, he added 50 grand to his bottom line ad infinitum. And it only took him a couple of weeks to implement. So... I've developed or changed it in such a way that now other people can actually plug their own numbers into it and then play with it. And it comes with the manual and, and so on. As we move into possibly what might be called a slowdown for small businesses, they would need, it would seem to me, to be a little bit more on top of their numbers and trying to tweak and trying to get the most out of the current business that they've got. Absolutely. And I think by planning and forecasting, that's key because... If you've got a target, you've got something to aim at, something to hit. It's like playing darts. If you've got a dartboard, you can throw a dart at a dartboard. If you don't have the board, you've got nothing to throw it at, if that makes sense. So you can then start to focus on what you're going to be doing around the business plan rather than worrying about what the media are saying is going to happen because you're in control of what you can do with your business. You're not in control of what happens in China or the interest rates or whatever it happens to be. That's outside your control, but what you can do is control and focus on what happens in your business uh, and ignore what the media say uh, unfortunately yes <laughs> <laughs> Russell great to talk it's to you the best possible way yeah. thank you very much for coming in great to talk to you thank you all the details as always on the station website or you can go over to let's all business online.com